The disclaimer is what I'm going to talk about has absolutely nothing to do with my day job. And so please don't reach out to my employers about what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> the acknowledgement is that uh, I'm reasonably self-aware. And what I'm going to tell you, uh, talk to you about is a bit of a head scratcher. And I'm very, very grateful for the partnership in this effort to Sandy. And so sort of at the three minute mark, I'm going to have him come up and sort of um, talk a little bit about why he sort of bought into some of these ideas. All right, so the, the project is uh, Breakfast at Proxima B. And uh, like every project, there's a very simple mission statement. And the mission statement for this project is on the 23rd of January, 2068, we are going to launch a manned or a human space exploration for Proxima B. Um, I have no idea what I'm personally going to be doing on that day. Um, I'm unlikely to be alive, or even if I'm alive, I'm unlikely to be particularly useful. However, I believe, for a number of reasons that I'll get into, that this is something we should be doing. A little bit of context around Proxima B. How many of you know, know about uh, an exoplanet? Okay. So um, for years and years and years, we thought you know, the solar system was the only system with planets. And then over the last decade or so, uh, the Kepler Space Telescope has ended up discovering uh, a, about 3,500 planets that are sort of within reasonable traveling distance. And reasonable in this context is you know, between five to 500 light years. And turns out that the nearest one is actually about four light years away. There's a binary star system, which is not that far from us. It's four light years away from us. Um, and one of the stars in the binary star system uh, is called Proxima Centauri, and it has an Earth-like planet. And if you're familiar with sort of the nomenclature, the star is always called the letter A, and the planet sort of it starts with sort of letters after that. And so Proxima B turns out to be the planet, the Earth-like planet, that is circling Proxima Centauri, which is a star that's about four light years away. There are, there's a lot to like about it. Um, one of the things is that it's earth light, so it has an earth light mass and earth light gravity. Uh, it also is likely to have water in liquid state, which as most people know, uh, it's, it's what you need for life. Uh, one of the things that I really like is that Proxima Centauri, the star itself, it's a red dwarf, so it has a life of four trillion years. And to put that in perspective, the sun is about halfway through its life, which is about, we're about five billion years old. So the sun has about four and a half billion years before it turns into a red giant, at which point the surface of the sun will be close to where the Earth is today, which obviously means there won't be life left. Um, there are a couple of things though about Proxima B which are hard. One of them is it's a red dwarf, and so there are tons of intense solar flares, intense enough that you might end up um, driving away a lot of the atmosphere. It's also tidally locked, which means that the one side of the planet always faces the sun, which means there's a very narrow band of life. Now, in 2068, I doubt that we'll have overthrown the laws of physics. And it turned, I think in the next, so my, my starting point of all of this was, oh my gosh, I mean, how do you solve the propulsion problem? And it turns out there isn't a whole lot you can do there. And, uh, in the next 30 years, we're going to figure out how to send about a few kilos, like 20 kilos of mass at about 10% the speed of light. So that, that based on people that I've talked to, that seems a very likely outcome. Um, what that really means is that it's a 40-year one-way trip. What that also means is that you're not going to be able to send adults. Because adults, with, unless there is sort of a step function change in cryogenics in the next 50 years, which is possible, but unlikely from, what, from people that I've talked to, it looks like we won't be able to send adults on this one-way journey, because just the food and nutritional requirements for a 40-year trip are going to be impossible from a physics perspective. So the way we are going to do this is, and this is our plan, is we want to send embryos. And at some level, it's really three simple problems, simple. One is we need to get them from here to there. Number two is once they are on site in Proxima B, they need to become babies. And then number three is once they're babies, you know, you need to raise them into adulthood without sort of a lot of the flies outcome, right? So those are the three big problems that we want to solve in the next 50 years. 
The thing that I love about this is that it's, it's an incredibly interdisciplinary problem. And um, what we have done is broken it down into a couple of tenure objectives. The first one is that we want to be able to solve the DNA adaptation problem to potentially novel environments, including sort of radiation proofing. The second thing that we want to do in the next 10 years is to automate a clinical art and teacher. For those of you who have kids, clinical art and teachers are amazing. The fact that they can keep like 24 kids under control for like a day bottles my mind. I could never do it. So if we could do even part way, solve that problem in the next 10 years, I think we're headed the right way. And I'm sure you'll realize that this is, even if we don't end up going to Proxima B, solving these problems will actually help in other problems that we have today. Mm -hmm.